all right folks so so good morning let's continue our discussion on <clears throat> very important authentication technique which is called passwords and all of us use it hence i am taking a little extra time to tease this uh, topic the reason why i'm taking extra time is that most of you are in the second year or third year and uh, you need to spread the awareness of uh, cyber security and especially passwords how to design password or how to create password uh, what password you should choose and so on how do you manage password in multiple accounts etc to all people around you because uh, very likely that you know because you know all uh, people who are not aware of cyber security will get will will become victim of uh, you know cyber frauds so it's very important for us not only to understand from this course but make sure that people around us are aware of these techniques and these are very simple techniques okay all right so contents i have taken from these places all right first i would like to congratulate all of you for successful mission on to on on as, as we have seen yesterday you know chandra and three lander landed on to moon okay so it's a great achievement this scientific achievement engineering achievement and all of you are going to be part of this kind of work directly or indirectly all right again you feel always proud of what you have done okay about 20 years back uh, i had a portion of working on wise or ip technology and nobody was talking about wise or ip uh, in in uh, year to year 95 or so okay how voice can be carried over and and when i see today whatsapp call and all these calls use uh, wise or ip i feel little you know pride that at least something useful is done so all of you will contribute in future about some scientific achievement will that will help our country and maybe other countries as well now i am asking you this question from security engineers perspective okay now you need to answer with your iq because i know many of you have not done course on communications as yet what kind of communication chandrayaan 3 use or using anyone see we discussed a point earlier that you will have to start thinking as a security engineer or at sometimes criminal cyber criminal then you get the answer suppose you are asked to hack you know such mission of enemy country okay or enemy countries hackers are, must be trying to hack this also now the question that i am asking is that first thing you have to think that you know i mean something that is not in front of you and you don't have access to that is there is a communication channel okay now there is a communication channel you have to think what kind of communication channel it must be using okay all of you know there is only radio waves right that can go over to to satellite right but you can't hack radio waves right i mean of course you can if you are very smart and you have millions of dollar you can send the some kind of interference jamming signal etc etc et what else now radio waves now you know i mean from control center they are sending messages or communication some communication is happening between the machines here and the machines there so what what will be uh, those signals like these are all commands right okay and that has to go over radio wave but it has to be coded it has to be in some form so usually 
Now, I don't know exactly. I can ask my friends who are working in ISRO. Uh, one of my senior, one of my classmates is actually a very senior guy was involved in this thing. So I can ask him, but from your common sense, you will know that it's a digital communication technology, right? Because it will require packet technology then. Digital is all about packet. Uh, of course, I mean, you can say circuit switching also, but digital communication in today's world is all packet. Then if it's a packet, then it has got to be message that will go over packet. Okay, what kind of layer two and layer three technologies you are going to use. Layer three in communication is IP technology, right? Layer two in general is Ethernet. Are we going to Ethernet here or not? Okay. So if you have to hack, it can be done at this level or IP level, right? In case Chandrayaan 3 is using IP, or they might have designed their own protocol such so that nobody can hack it. There is also a possibility they are not using IP, but very similar to IP. Okay. All right. So the now question that you start asking yourself, can someone hack it? If that if someone can hack it, then you have to protect. You have to think about how to provide security into such systems, right? Now next thing is that now of course how you know, whole system is working, right? Where is the communication going? Is it going directly to uh, rover? Okay, or robot modules that are on moon surface? Or is it going through something else? It's going through orbiter. Okay, and can this be hacked and controlled by somebody? And if you are given a task, to advise ISRO on how to provide security, then what will be your recommendation? Any thought? Okay, obviously, you know, very simple. See satellite or whatever, you know, rocket or, or lander module, all are controlled by somewhere from Earth, right? Okay, there must be some center which is controlling it, right? And that central also is connected over IP. Now your machine is also an IP. Now from your machine, you can connect to this place if you are a thief. Okay, and then you have access, right? If security is not proper here, then of course, once you have access, then of course, this place also will have security. Your lander module will also have security, right? Orbiter will have security then. How do you handle it? How do you overcome that? If you are a criminal or if you are protected, then you'll have to think how criminals can invade it or, or, or uh, you know, get into the whole system and how do you are going to save it? Just start thinking. All right. Okay. Now, shall I give you as assignment number two? You need to do a little assignment, little uh, research and give me the answer. Okay, so I will post this assignment. We'll have to complete it in next one week. And all you have to use uh, whatever is available on net. Okay, public information. All right, okay. Well, so today we'll cover some of these topics. Uh, let's start. Okay, this, the first one, we have already discussed in last class, how do we people pick up your their password? How do you, now I am asking you, how do you pick up your password? Do you follow the instruction which website gives? 
if your website doesn't give instruction to you some older websites don't give instruction to you then how do you pick up your password okay there's a now you know that passwords can be broken you know okay and then it takes is it the password it's much easy to break the password you know simple password like uh, password if you keep password as password 123 can be broken in less than few milliseconds all right oh okay all right okay all right okay if uh, you write your name and just add 123 then it can be possibly will broken in less than a minute because all these are dictionary words and cyber criminals know that so they will create it you know a file or dictionary of dictionary words or kind of uh, they will pick up words from dictionary and then create password which can be attempted right on very powerful machines now the the, the simple thing is that you know that people often don't apply their brain when they pick up the password and we know the passwords are the most important credentials that you have okay if pass because and most of the hacking or cyber crimes etc happen because of cyber criminals get access to your password okay about 60 to 70% crimes happen because of that all right okay now the okay this this point you just go through it uh, we'll not discuss and this already we have discussed right most popular password that has been used uh, has been like guest password that we discussed in last class these are the most popular passwords uh, we have seen earlier this slide we have seen earlier these are most popular password used globally and so on and 2020 this is a little old data 2002 3 i think study must be out okay uh, you don't be like this person where you know in order to you have, we have now 100 plus websites the, or you know places where we need passwords don't write it over on your body otherwise your intimate partner will scream okay default password we already discussed that most of us don't change the default password just very simply any device remember this thing any device that has a computer or microprocessor or any form of computing and that is connected to internet will have a device id device or user which you can set okay and will also have password now very simple security technique they have given actually it should, it's just only password you can hack into any device ideally it should be more than that but nevertheless so you now this user id and password is under your control now if i know ip address of your machine and user id is default user id id because you know when they sell box to you they, they, then they don't give any of this uh, you know uh, they you know they they will not customize it for you they will give default user id and default password okay then anybody can get into your router right all right okay now i have given you assignment about mirai botnet okay please go through it give that uh, this assignment you'll have to complete within a week okay now it's not your machines only that are under attack anything like a nuclear reactors or you know your utility companies like the, those are supplying you electricity or uh, or gas or water all are connected over internet and all are all have uh, controls that uses internet 
okay not only that your railway railways right controls for railways all are on internet and these all can be hacked all right okay this is a question i am going to ask you now what is your most imp you have 100 plus password right i have about 60 plus i have reduced number of accounts right? but still so if you have say let's assume you have 50 passwords or 50 accounts and corresponding password right? which is the most important Yeah, anyone? Bank ATM. Bank ATM. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. ATM. Your pin. But how will somebody hack into that? Let's assume my pin is say five zero six zero. Okay. If I tell you my even you have seen me coming to say uh, Access Bank. Okay. And tell you my password, my pin is how will you hack into this? You cannot hack it, right? Until I give you my card, or you you somehow get access to my card, or you clone my card using some method, right? So it's kind of difficult, right? So it's a uh, yeah, good attempt, but what else? Where you do do you get all your information? Social media password. Pardon? Video? No, no. Social media, please. Any? Uh, Pardon? Social media, any uh, WhatsApp or? Uh, social uh, media, uh, yeah, it's vulnerable, but it cannot do uh, much harm to you. I mean, all they can post some, you know, cyber criminals get hold of it, then they can post some messages there, right? Or they can collect some information about you, which anyway is public. So most important thing is your inbox of email system, right? So if you're using Google, Gmail, and if you're not created account in Gmail or some similar one, then you should create because you know when you leave with the organization or a school you're studying, then you have to have some email account that will remain consistent where people can connect with you, right? So I have, for example, Gmail. So there I get everything, okay? I get lot, lot of information. And if that is hacked, then lot of information is hacked. In fact, there are people who have, uh, you know, whatever password they have, like 50 passwords. They have written on a sheet and taken a pic of that and then put that into, uh, Google file or or uh, or Google photo. So you once your email address, Gmail address, and password is hacked, then lot of information is leaked. Okay, so you have to if 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 you have said very simple, only user ID password kind of password, then start using first thing is more complicated password, and second thing is you have to have a two factor identification right and most of us have not we are not using multi factor uh, authentication okay all right in a lot of case studies where you know people after hacking gmail account or or uh, some account email account got a lot of information and from that information they have hacked bank accounts and so on all right so you please go through this the value of your hack pattern is just too much. Now, for you, it's too much because you can look at you know your privacy is gone, your photos are there, it's, it's gone, it can be misused. Okay, cyber criminals can use you now change these photos and ask the money. Right, it's a very common crime. Right, I mean you can morph somebody else's photo and create obscene photo and ask money, especially for women. Okay, so so never put your photographs in general onto any social media site. Okay, until uh, and if you're doing it, they delete it very soon. Then of course you get all the details about your Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc., right? And then um, okay, uh, all billing information, financial information, spam, 
uh, once somebody knows all that you know they they see from your email they can also get contact email addresses okay also phone numbers and then they can be used for sending spam i mean they can i'm sure you would have received an email from your friend asking for help give and you will say that i am in malaysia i got stuck and i need 100 dollars can you send it to my this account and so on and so forth right you would have got this kind of email i have got many in fact i got a mail from uh, a friend like that and then i called this friend and he says oh my account is hacked it looks like okay all right and so on Now, when you are studying this course, you'll have to start thinking smart, okay? Of course, we'll start study threat modeling of password, but before that, let me start, we'll give you what happened yesterday. Of course, I, I went to hospital to see my friend who was under surgery, he was going through surgery, heart surgery, so I couldn't come for class, but a friend's daughter who is in Bangalore, okay she got a call from police station that the courier that she has sent she has sent courier from home local courier that is uh we call it uh, you know whatever you know i mean uh, a porter or there are many such right she sent a parcel to her friend okay by courier so in between, this courier guy was stopped by a police guy and, and then police guy then called this girl that we have intercepted this parcel that you have sent to your friend and that has drugs. Okay, so I am calling from particular police station. And we have arrested this courier guy. Okay, now how will you solve this problem? Now we can translate this problem also into digital problem, right? Our our cyber security problem later. And they say that. This police, police, police guy says that, okay, we can resolve this if you give me, say, 10,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees, otherwise we will arrest you. How will you solve this problem? Assume that you are, you got this call. How would you have handled this? You can see the flaws here. Yeah, attempt answering. We are trying to model a threat here that can come to you later. This is a threat. Yeah, anybody attempt this, na? How would you conclude from this? This is a this is a <clears throat> normal a ransomware kind of call. Or somebody is a fraud call, is a is crime that's happening. How do you know? I'm asking you folks, apply yourself, right? So we can inform cyber crime details as they were not tapping up my phone. Yes, you can apply cyber crime. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you can say cyber police, you can inform possibly. Now, a lot of things are. You first thing first is that okay, can somebody prove that the packet you have sent has drugs to somebody else? Can you prove? No, we this? can ask them to do chemical testing if it is actually drugs. No, no, we don't have to go to that. That why should you? The moment you say, and then police wala will say that this is a drug. You are accepting that you have sent that. How do you authenticate? 
we have studied three uh, things right confidentiality integrity authentication right how can somebody authenticate that it has come from you and there is no mallory in between who has changed the contents of the packet okay first thing first is that nobody can tell that you have sent this because there is no proof that you have sent it even if you send it something from courier there is no proof i mean the only thing is they will say that they have collected this packet but is can't courier guy change the contents of the packet person can be mallory or trudy or anybody so you send an internet email from one end in between mallory x receives it change the contents from i love you to i hate you and send it to bob this is exactly same thing that can happen okay there's a first thing you will learn uh, you know when we study cyber security that you cannot trust anything so no nobody can solve this problem what is the second i then i suggested to another thing this first thing that nobody can prove you so don't 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 fear don't be fearful what is the second thing that comes to your mind if the genuine police guy okay there is a process that is to be followed right there is a fir and then he has could send you some official communication nobody can send you know a police guy cannot send you it can tell you that you are cyber criminal or you sorry you are a criminal nobody nobody is right to say until they prove it so we'll say okay the phone call comes you will say that okay i don't know who you are first prove your identity send me your you know official id card and send you me the official phone number i mean like like your landline phone number and give me phone number of your senior of course he can always pretend that somebody else is senior and so on and so forth right but the moment you ask for the identity the person knows that you are smarter all right and third third suggestion i told uh, her is that the moment next time call comes you say that my lawyer will talk to you and i have recorded your communication now the moment you say you have recorded the communication then now you have proved that person has asked for money all right so you can apply this principle confidentiality integrity and authentication here we have applied integrity and authentication principle and when she did that she didn't receive the next call right and of course i asked her to inform cyber police about it all right okay so now we'll have to think as a criminal threat modeling of password method how our passwords can be leaked right and then we'll have to make sure that how we work on that right guessing the password cyber criminal can guess your password okay now if you have a laptop and he wants to break the laptop open by by you know your laptop always you keep you know some password user id and password okay and then you can continue do that forever right and can possibly get into it so guessing the password manually is possible but what may also happen is that if it's online you're trying to guess the password for some account after three four attempts the system will lock it but this is one method somebody can guess your password and attempt using that password online okay second is impersonating the real login program what does it mean what is impersonating okay so he can create a phishing site and ask for the credential yeah very good so somebody suppose you go to a bank your bank is for example icici and you are, you get a link from some 
in web page that if you want to buy this product or do something then uh, you know there's a bank website or some some somehow you click on something which is a fake website instead of taking you to icici bank and you don't notice the http uh, you know whether http is there or https is there and what is the whatever you know details are there you don't check because most of the time we just click and it goes to a website that contains exactly same you know look and feel and then you will uh, you then uh, on right hand side or left hand side you will get login prompt so you will write your user id and password it's all in plain right it's a plain text and this site captures that and then system crashes i mean for you it will say that system crash or something like that and you get out of it that's all you forget about it right now this website has captured your user id and password and they can reuse it they can sorry they can use it to to log into your account all right these are the two what is key logging So he can track my keypad, but to keys I am typing. Yeah, how do you track? By inserting how a malware you... into my program. Uh, absolutely, yeah. So basically, somehow cyber criminal is able to put a malware program, or key logger is called. And there are a lot of you just need to find out what are those, right? And how do they get? There's a good possibility that your key, uh, all your keys that you're typing are logs in a file and this file is being sent to a cyber criminal outside this is a good probability i think in this class of 100 students at least one student will have a key logger into their machine which could be your your laptop ipad or tablet or your mobile phone okay shoulder surfing when you are typing some your user id password somebody is you know comes behind you and then notes your user id and password or there is a camera if you go to a place say say for example of course the airport may not have it but some some not very friendly place or cafe etc and the cafe is owned by some cyber criminal then there is a camera which will uh, at an angle where they can capture what you are typing okay if you are using same password multiple this is then this can be also a weakness okay one place in one place the if you know user id and you are using same user id like you know user id nowadays your google id google you know, gmail id right or email id and using same password multiple side is cyber criminals able to get this password and if you are using multiple places then can break into multiple accounts Social engineering is, you know, they can trick you. Social cyber criminals can trick you to reveal PIN or password, right? They, you, your grandfather gets a phone call, as we mentioned earlier, and then cyber criminals can cheat these innocent people who do not know about all these crimes, right? Data leaks, of course, you know, see, your password is saved somewhere in wherever you are logging into right like amazon.com or hundreds of other websites okay if these websites are hacked then this password file for all user is available in darknet right cyber criminals and there's a value for it right you can buy password file for maybe uh, fifty thousand users for maybe one million dollars something like that okay so don't use passwords, uh, reuse passwords in multiple accounts. That's the first learning that you will have. Okay, all right. Okay, now how do you manage that password? How passwords are managed? If it's so simple to break. First thing is there's something called password hashing. Okay, so when, when a website or system stores a password, they don't store the password in plain. It's not in plain text, they hash it. Okay, hash, note that hashing is different from encryption. So we'll study that. 
okay all right so we'll we'll study now uh, how how does it happen then second is that you in website you see the strength meters okay many websites they tell you this password is weak and strong these are called strength meters and longer password you have to use you know 13 14 letters uh, or 13 14 uh, characters including uh, all these combinations and which is not a dictionary word then is usually strong enough okay third thing is lock after and failed attempts right the website need to have this method that if somebody if you try wrong password then website should be logged all right so this will prevent remote guessing attacks like online if you're trying to hack into somebody's system it will stop you from doing this and secondly is compromise credential checks now what does it mean your password user id and password is leaked so what you can do is that you can go check whether your user id and password is with in the dark net or not and a lot of websites are there where you can check this right and if you know that your password is leaked then better change the password immediately all right okay let's just start with the first one there's a password it's called password hashing this is a user okay now user uses a password this cypherpunk okay now it is kept in the system password file as a hashed thing now cypherpunk will look like this okay so if this password file is leaked cyber criminals will get this corresponding to this user all right now hashing function is one way for, uh, function right so this is a password you hash the password you get a string of fixed length whatever would be a password length set 20 characters for example it will turn into this string of certain lengths maybe 124 128 or 256 or so on whatever okay and note that this is one way function so you can go this way but given you this thing this thing okay somebody has this thing you cannot immediately generate this one you cannot actually reverse it doesn't work in other direction okay so so we store hash password most of the website is store hash password and just about 20 but you will find many websites which are weakly designed still use plain text the password in plain text which is a major crime in my opinion okay all right uh Sir, yeah and then how website verify that the password entered by a user is correct or not yeah uh, we'll come to that just hold on huh? there's an next line says when user enters the password the first time you have created that your password is set and is there in password file when you later on you log into the system then you enter the password then system will compute its hash and compare with something that's stored so every time you enter a password system here for example you're getting into hgfc band then it will look at your password and then create a hash of that and then compared with the hash value all right okay so hash function must be some properties so given hash of a password which is stored in a file it is impossible it's very hard to find a string x so it's a uh, okay so you cannot give an h x you cannot find x from that that's very important property okay all right so alice now sets her password as cat pajamas okay the system will use hash and save this as a hash of p which is cat pajamas in system all right next time alice enters password say p dash then system will come create hash of that and compare h of p dash with something that's stored which is h of p is stored if both match 
then you are not she is allowed to use the system our login is successful if they don't match then she is not allowed simple so every time she enter you enter your password is the system will come uh, calculate hash and compare it with something that's stored so now let's we'll we'll have one full lecture on hash function but to tell you very briefly it has a one wayness property okay this we have already discussed okay um, if the system gets breached hashes are leaked passwords are not leaked right all right okay and then of course you know uh, these are the other properties collision resistance that uh, you know you cannot you suppose your password is say cat pajama okay okay and it hashes into a value some hash value you cannot have another password say i love you and which will hash into the same thing is impossible to find for given p is impossible to find p dash and both hash to the same so there is no collision here of course there are a lot of good hash functions we'll study later okay now you go to this website okay and then you can check how much time it will take to break open your or break your password you know there's software we, we i will give you assignment where you will actually use a software breaking tool okay and then you try that keep you know if your password is for example this then how much time it will take to break okay so as an exercise you just do this you go to this password how secure is my password and you enter your password here and it will tell you how much time you know whatever be your password of course hash of that system will calculate and then see that how hash of that can be actually broken into offline okay so you this hash file is leaked then cyber criminals will attempt offline to break that using the same hash function we will come to that later so if you have four now this is diagram that i have taken from this website okay so if your password has so many number of characters four five six seven and so on if it's a number only if you have you know in websites so if website allows you to have only numbers and you put for example one two three four or seven eight five four or whatever all these can be broken instantly and this is up to 11 num numbers right if, if password has 11 numbers the number of characters which are all digits then it can be instantly broken and if you increase it to 18 and so on then it will take about six days now if you use only lowercase letters up to say nine eight letters it can be broken instantly and if you have in fact uh, say 16 characters right lowercase then it will take 713 years and so on and so forth <clears throat> now if you look at but you know it's very difficult to remember 16 letter long <clears throat> password right okay and if you have to create then you use some uh, phrase some phrase not phrase as simple as that i love you or i hate you and so on these are all cyber criminals no but you know something from a story or something that you know you may create of your own but better thing is that use uppercase and lowercase letters then even if you have combination of say six upper and lowercase letters it can be broken immediately and so on so forth right if you use number uppercase lowercase letters then again you will have to see that if something that is of 11 it has 11 characters that can be broken into 10 months and you have combination of symbols etc etc then up to six characters if you have so suppose i say ravi this four one at the rate if this is my password, this can be broken immediately. Okay. And if you increase the length, for example, if you increase the length to even 10, okay, then it will take two weeks for cyber criminals to break it. 
from leaked password file. And if you have, say, okay, 13 and so on, then it will take 15,000 years and so on, so forth, right? Okay, now you know that cyber criminals are also using all this cloud and distributed processing and you know GPUs, etc. To break open or to to uh, to find out what your passwords are. There are a lot of tools available. Other thing you can do is that you go to this website and you put your email address address and you you will find from this whether your account has your password has been leaked or email ID has been email id and password uh, we, uh, for example uh, i had account in uh, uh, flip not flipkart uh, this grocery website right whatever you know uh, i'm forgetting big basket okay so my website my uh, email id if you even go there and find out it has been leaked from there and many other places so it means that Big basket had this password database and this has been leaked. Okay, so if I don't change my old password, then my account can be hacked at any point in time. Okay, of course, they will uh, get into my big basket account. And then if I'm using same password at multiple places, then all my accounts can be hacked. Please go to this website, have I been pawned, uh, and then you'll get all right. Stolen passwords are all available for purchase and sale. So you can buy. So this one such example, right? So say that LinkedIn, all of us are using, LinkedIn has been hacked, okay? And password file has been stolen. It has 167 million passwords available. Okay, and it's, it's, uh, you can buy it for five Bitcoins. Okay, five Bitcoin is quite expensive, but uh, it's available. If cyber criminal wants to buy it and use these user IDs and password, then and they can maybe successful in some of some cases, right? Because there's a lot of value for cyber criminals, right? Okay, all right. No, why Facebook is buying password? from the black market. Password, you know, Facebook is also buying. This password that have been leaked. Can you answer this question? Yeah, think about it. Okay, so if you have Facebook account, and if you said you use password, and this the password happens to be in this leaked account. If your password in past has been leaked and is available and uh, in uh, in black market, and Facebook has bought that. Uh, password and they have cracked it open or maybe it's available in a cat form to Facebook and when you say my name is Ravi whatever and then I change my password or I set my account and use the password then Facebook can prompt me don't use this password it's already used by you how will they know they would have bought it from somewhere right this place you can find out if your personal information has been compromised. Go to Firefox. Um, in Firefox, you search for it, you'll get it, right? And you can also find details from Google security blogs. All right. Um, in the next class, we will study how, what has been attacks on password and so on and so forth, right? Okay. Now I am going at least three classes slower than I am supposed to be. I am taking a lot of time in the beginning, so I need at least one more hour this week. At least I need to recover for three last hours. So uh, can we have a class today between five and six, or six or seven? 
we have a class from 5 to 6 okay then when can we class 7 to 8 what time you take your dinner 7 to 8 